Hello everybody, it's Bruce again. Welcome back to and some others from the period. It's getting a lot of use these days in pop music, and I think it's going to stick around a while because it's a great technique for filling out the sound of a snare, especially something like the 707 snare here, which unprocessed is a little bit flabby. Not much to it by comparison, huh? But with the gated reverb, Kind of puts it in a really cool space and really fills it up. So the approach I'm using to do this is a return track because I'm sending the snare to this but I'm also using it a bit on these toms right here. Along with the delay I've got on the other return channel. So let's look at what's going on here. On the return A track here I've got an instrument, or a, sorry, an effect rack that I created based around this Sound Toys Little Plate Reverb. This is modeled after a real electromechanical plate reverb that you used to have in the studio as outboard gear. And they went ahead and, since we're in the DSP digital world now, they uh, added a whole lot of decay time that you couldn't get out of the original unit. The original unit uh, could, you know, physically only make up to five second decay time. Now you can get infinite decay out of this. So endless reverb is definitely possible and makes the gating that we're about to talk about all the more important. So a gated reverb, as you might guess, is built of that reverb and a gate. In between, I've just got a saturator here just to uh, get a little more sizzle out of the high end. I like that really sparkly reverb sound for this 80s stuff. Um, but disregarding that, the gate is the next biggest part of this equation. Let's listen without the gate and you'll see what I mean. Put the snare on. Yeah, washi, huh? Because that's all 16 second decay time untamed, which means that we get a whole wash of reverb and we can't hear the articulation of each snare hit anymore. It just gets lost. So that's where the gate comes in. What we do is we add a gate behind our reverb, we sidechain it sort of to itself to the return track that it's on so that the gate will only open and let the reverb signal through when it gets some input from our snare, for example. So when we get the signal from the snare, the gate opens lets that giant reverb sound through and then the gate will close again over a period which is controlled by the release knob here. So the approach for gated reverb snare sound is basically a matter of tuning your threshold which is how it's picking up each snare signal that it's getting. You want to tune that just so it catches the peaks and also tuning this release knob which is a function of the tempo of the song and the effect you're going for and how much space you're trying to create and how much signal you're sending to this channel itself. So if we play with this release, you'll see what I mean. Um, here's the drums. If I turn the release back up, you can hear we're back into that wash. We lose our articulation again. And on the flip side, if we use too quick release, 
we get a little of that fat reverb sound, but it's not creating the space we're looking for, and it pumps too much when the toms come in. So you're going to want to tune this just right so that the reverb drops out right before your next snare hit comes in. So for this track, that happens to be 150 milliseconds. So once you've got your release time set, you're pretty much off and running. You can feed a uh, signal to this. I'm using it a little bit on the toms. And let's drop back the entire track back in. So now you can also make an 80s gated reverb snare sound. So go forth and be radical. <laughs>